Welcome, everybody. I'm joined by Andy, and we are here to do a tier list, like everyone on the internet, ranking stuff of Decipher games. You know that we're huge Decipher fans. So yeah. we thought we'd look in the catalog. We have 12 card games that they made. So we didn't do RPGs or anything else or spin off. Yeah, it's a murder mystery, not on hand. Yeah, this is just games that have physical cards printed, and they're all out of print. Probably for reasons, different reasons for each of them, but we're going to make a list, S being the best, D being the worst. Uh, we're looking at this sort of holistically, how sound was the game, how big of an impact did it have, is it just absolutely silly? If some of these games you don't recognize the images for, uh, it was hard to find some of these images because <laughs> these games didn't have very good print runs and were not good, but we're going to start off with our D tier, the very worst game they made i think is fight club which is right here um uh, yeah, that's a pyramid scheme, scheme. <laughs> <It's> a pyramid <laughs> scheme. <laughs> yeah i don't know i mean like i guess the idea of it was pretty good where it was like take they got like all these licenses for like movies like rambo and robocop and stuff and like it's like battle them against each other and like in theory that sounds really great you know i'd love to see what you know rambo does against robocop but nobody else in the world cared and honestly neither did i and i wasn't buying into a pyramid scheme and How like the, a pyramid scheme exactly like they just didn't have the money to... it, it was like it was i, I mean you put me on the spot here I don't, I don't quite remember how it was a pyramid scheme it was like everybody that you recruited got made like because like you could only order fight club direct from decipher so like every person that was like under you meant that i don't remember if it was like you got a bigger discount or you were able to like order more of the product or something mm -hmm. but then like if they recruited people i mean a literal pyramid scheme like if, if they recruited people in under them then you got kicked back on their bonus as well. And well, it was like, well, love a good 90s pyramid scheme. It's just a beautiful time. Well, let's, let's not spend too much time on crappy games. Yeah. Uh, next in our, our list here is, is Boy Crazy. And this game is just phenomenal, right? Like <laughs> Jason <laughs> Colorado, baby. Come on. The, the, the absolute <laughs> concept behind like designing a card game for teenage oh, girls. Predator game. It's like just so bad. I if I had an E tier or like if I didn't just if it, this is like F tier, oh, honestly. It's it's the concept is crazy. Everything about it. Register around school districts if you play this game. Yeah, yeah. It, it is uh we did a whole video on Boy Crazy. You guys should go check it out. But yeah, this lots is the best of video we ever did. Um all right, next in our D tier we have well, no, I'm just kidding. Um <laughs> we're gonna put Beyblade. And I, I don't know anything about this game. Yeah, I but know what Beyblade is. It, it truly it had like a print run of one or two sets, which leads me to believe that it didn't have staying power, it didn't have an impact. Uh, it just happened and then it's gone. So that's why Beyblade's there. If we have any Beyblade stands, I'd love to hear that this is a great game, but the impact sure. of the game was pretty minimal. Speaking next, minimal impact, Mega Man Warrior. This is another one. It was a few great sets. video games, but like not in card game form don't care don't know anything yeah. about how the game plays um it might be phenomenal I, I don't know it didn't have any impact d i couldn't find like a community now i couldn't find i mean i even struggled to find that logo right <laughs> i had to google for like a couple minutes so that's our d tier all pretty forgettable name i mean they're also just bad ip uh mega man i, mean, I don't know beyblade I, I don't know a lot but they're not like S tier IP here, right? It's sort of bottom of the barrel. So let's yeah. move to our C tier. This is where things get a little more fun. Austin Powers. You know, I've been thinking about what I wanted to say about Austin Powers. I'm sure a lot of people would just put this in the D tier and move on with their life. But like, as a party game, it's not the worst. But you have to kind of think about like, who would you actually play a party game of Austin Powers with in 2024? And the answer is literally nobody. Like Austin Powers, like Geist is like non-existent anymore outside of like random like mid 30s to mid 50s people. <laughs> the question of like, how much is this? And they go like one million dollars. Like that's like the cultural impact of Austin Powers now. 
And it's like, Austin Powers is just kind of like this bizarre IP where like it came out at a time like right as the cusp of humanity was about to change in 1997 and everybody got onto the internet like six months after this movie came out. And this movie is just critiquing like 1970s James Bond. And it's like, if you think about, and like the other thing with this game is like, it's all a bunch of like PG 13 Austin powers things where it's like that rocket ship is so big. And you're like, wow, this euphemism, like when I was 13, I thought that was the greatest thing in the world, but I'm 40 years old and I have to go to a meeting with finance to talk about amortization of rounding errors on things. And it's like, I don't, I don't give a shit about Austin powers anymore. Honestly, like I nobody know. does. As a party game, it's not bad. You could reskin it into something better than Austin Powers. I also just think the, on Austin Powers. The, the concept of a party CCG is just kind of dumb. <laughs> yeah. just, there's yeah. better yeah. ways to do that. The only other good thing about the Austin Powers game is that they bought that car from yeah. the movie. And then I found out, I can't remember if it was from Jim Colson or like. I think it was from Jim, maybe it's somebody else that's like decipher person, like Chuck or something like that, that they were rather than like put it on a like car trailer mover that they'd use for like car dealerships to move cars around. They actually just drove it between conventions on the regular highway and it got into an accident and the car got totaled and that's why they don't have the car anymore. <laughs> Uh, I so will just say about Austin Powers the seat, the scene of him in a tent where they're just like taking things out from like the shadow. I think it's in the second one. It's just like whoa, it's it's a silly game, but it, I think it's better than the one the four below. That's why it's in our C tier. Yeah. So let's keep yeah, going in our C tier. Anybody for putting it at D. Right. Yeah. All right. We have Jedi Knights, pretty forgettable Star Wars game to be honest. Which is it's really bad. Like yeah. Um, yeah, but if you, I don't know, the CGI stuff just doesn't hold it's up. It's like Nintendo 64 graphics on cards, and it just yeah, doesn't work. Like, I, I I really want it to, like, be something that's more interesting, but it's like, why would I just not play Star Wars CCG over this? Yeah. Uh, I think it was also unnecessary. They're like, what else do we get out of the Star Wars license? What if we had another card game? Uh, I mean, I've, I've figured around a little bit. It's not like completely garbage. It's just pretty forgettable. That's why it's C, not D. Yeah. But uh, let's move up to our B tier. I think this is when stuff's getting a little more fun here. Yeah. I'm putting Wars here. Wars is an okay game. It improves a lot of the rules on Star Wars CCG. Uh, I think the timing was bad with the game coming out. The marketing was odd. Uh, they spent a lot of money getting big name sci-fi writers like Michael Stackpole to like write some Wars comics. I think there's a lot of potential there. It just didn't go anywhere. It had two sets and then it was gone and the company's gone. Yeah. So that's why Wars is where it is. They were, but I think they were trying to like bank on Star Wars CCG people like coming into it because people, they, I don't know, like Star Wars CCG people didn't go over to Wizards star wars tcg and they were like oh it's the same mechanics and it's like yeah but honestly like the mechanics of star wars no matter when you play it in the it from in premiere or you know virtual set whatever the pc's up to like the mechanics of star wars ccg are pretty clunky like nobody's like oh i want to play this game because of the mechanics of star wars it's like no i wanted to play the game because i could open it's up Darth Star Vader. Wars. Yeah. Star Wars. <laughs> Wars is also the worst name game because it came out in 2005, right when like search engine optimization was figuring itself out. So, like, to find the game is impossible because it's like oh, Wars it's card game. Like, Star did you mean Star Wars board game? It was just kind of very missable. It, it's mm -hmm. fine if you can get a booster box for 10 bucks and, you know, play a little draft with buddies. That sounds like a fine afternoon. But you said it can be drafted. I'm, I'm yeah. really intrigued by that. But like, eh, whatever, you know. I, I I agree. All right. Next in our B tier, we have Young Jedi. Young Jedi is a game. It is 
<laughs> it is not terrible. It, it was designed for a younger audience, I think, to have this on ramp to Star Wars CCG, which was obviously the, the big product. Young Jedi is mechanically fine. The cards look okay. I, I just they look really good. Right? Yeah. I, I think some of the later stuff they're doing actually made the game a little more interesting. It just was overprinted. Yeah. Once they started putting like actual game text on stuff and making things do things other than just be like power and destiny and it's basically just war with you know like like real old school like playing cards war where you just flip over cards and you know i mean the cards look great it's very just eh, whatever i think if they had actually branched out and gone with original trilogy this would have been a lot higher up to be honest like they just because it's episode one you just kind of miss the boat and it's like i know you love episode one episode one is horrible i hate episode one so it's like (laughs) so it's like i just don't care the only card i collected out of this was all the versions of r2d2 because r2d2 is the same basically looking and it's just like yeah, I mean, it's cool. Uh, the game's just is, uh, you know, I think a lot of people give it a lot of flack, though, because they only played Menace of Darth Maul, and, like, that set's just very vanilla. Yeah, I, I agree. All right, we have four games left here. Where are things going to go? I got one more for B tier, and I think it's pretty evident from the <laughs> the four that are there where that one is. Uh, if you can't see the card, this is Dot Hack. This was based on an anime, I believe. I've never played a an anime in the said it. thousands. Yeah, I never saw the anime. Not like a huge anime person. I don't really know. I've never played the game. All I know is. Anytime I talk to anybody about Dot Hack, everybody says it was a great game. Yeah, I it's, agree. Which which intrigues me. Like, you know, I maybe would like to do one of those like videos with you and Steve, where it's like, let's do a deep dive and learn how to play Dot Hack Enemy because everybody every says this game's great. You know, but I don't know enough about it. Just on that merit alone it gets a B from me because I've never heard anybody say anything bad about the game. Yeah. I I think my, my criticism there is just the obscurity. And like part of this ranking is like, what was the impact it had on gaming? What was the impact it had like the longevity? And I don't think they have a very active play community. Now there's not really an online client that I could find. So that's why it's at beer. It might be a, a great game, but it didn't really have a huge impact on cards on you know CCGs, TCGs, etc. It just happened. I hear it's okay. That's why it's beer B. But we're gonna move to A T or here. And um what are we gonna do here? I think uh we have three I, games. I know you only have one in this tier. Personally I have two in this tier. Let's start with the one I think we both agree about. Star Trek. Star Trek. This game should just be a board game. That's that's the summary. I mean, it. The cards all look phenomenal. I mean, that's just kind of like a a hallmark thing that all decipher games look phenomenal, right? Star Trek just looks phenomenal. There's just so many sets. It's spread out across two editions. Most people that at least you know, like I'm in the camp of people with Star Trek, where like my frame of reference of Star Trek was like premiere alternate universes in Q continuum. And like, that was just two people playing solitaire against each other with 250 card decks for like an hour and a half. And it just doesn't really seem like it was a lot of fun. Yeah, And I get that there's like a ton of like stuff that happens later in the sets, like, like a lot of the deep space nine era sets like blaze of glory and, the dominion and all those things like introduce a lot more like battling and interactivity which probably is a great thing for first edition 
And I hear second edition is just actually just a more streamlined, better version of the game. But everybody just likes first edition because that's just, it's mostly yeah. collectors, which fine, I get it, completely get it. But if you ever look at like a deck list from this game, it's confusing as hell. And it's like, you've got your seed deck, which you've got your missions, you've got your dilemmas, but then you've got your Q tent, you've got your this thing you got sometimes you can put an objective in it not like a star wars objective but just like there's like a seated objective sometimes you can just play the objective you can play events and there's personnel that can be in your seed deck but then there's personnel that can be in your draw deck and your draw deck is like can you can have an unlimited number of cards so like some decks are just like you know 170 cards and then you split across multiple decks and you're just like there's so much to keep track of and it's like a I play a card, you play a card, and they had to introduce like downloading and uploading free plays, and it's just like this. Just I think it's it 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 a little bit messy. It, it suffered from the lack of optimization in early CCGs, where people didn't understand that everyone wanted to play a fifteen to twenty minute game. That's the ideal length of a card game. That's how long a match of Magic is, give or take ten minutes. But like that's how long Morkana is. Because that, that's really like what people want to do. They want to play like three matches in an hour. They don't want to like take 45 minutes to set up a game and then take another hour and a half to play it without any interaction with their opponent. And Star Trek was one of the first CCGs. I think, you know, if you think like probably first like four, 15, yeah, 15 yeah. games out there. And Star Trek was one of them. And it, it suffered from that, but it, it went from 94 to 2007. So it had a pretty long run. Sure. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's been it's, running for over 10 years. It's definitely one of those games that came out of the mindset of this is like board games or like RPG adjacent games rather than its own individual thing. And like for people that want that, absolutely, like it will give you a very Star Trek experience, right? Yeah. Um, which, you know, is, is fantastic. And I think that's one of the things that Decipher did well with every game, whether that's Austin Powers or, you know, Star Trek. You know, you're going to get what that movie was in a card game form. Um, you know, it just feels like I'm going to, like, playing Star Trek to me is, like, on par with, like, setting up, like, Axis and Allies or, like, Twilight Imperium, where it's going to be, like, all right, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to marathon this game for the next 16 hours, right? Like, that's where my mind goes with Star Trek. Which I think, like, the modern consumer, modern gamer just doesn't have the time for that anymore. Yeah. Um, so, anyways, that's, that's enough on Star Trek. We got two left here. Upon further consideration, I am going to agree with you on this. Yeah. Lord of the Rings CCG, I love the game. I spent a lot of time collecting it, playing it. I think it's a pretty complete product from 1 to 18 or 19. Yeah. You know, obviously, the later sets are kind of broken, but I do think there's a limitation with it always being a race to 9, and... I just think it's always lame. You have to destroy the ring. <laughs> After playing a lot of matches, I'm like, ah, this just isn't always that interesting to destroy the ring. What if we were doing something else instead? In this yeah, year? you know, I think you you said it once. Like, if they had introduced objectives, like make Aragorn King Alisar, or yes. get, you know, the elves to the Grey Haven so they can sail across the sea, or, you know, Gandalf needs to go do level up something yeah. and find you know wh whatever it is right and you get some type of little objective that they start and it says like you know you get to play site path one through three and then your opponent plays the rest or something and then like if you get you know gandalf to you know rivendell and elrond's there flip this objective and now you know gandalf's power plus two in battles and but like if, if there was something like that where you could do literally anything other than just race to nine and get to nine and be like okay six of my companions all go to the dead pile but frodo lived i win the game it's like yeah but if you're trying to recreate like like one of the good things that 
decipher always did was be able to really translate the movie or the tv show into a card game and it's like if you're just racing to nine and letting all the companions die that's not re really like fellowship of the ring is a pretty different movie if aragorn just you know becomes defender plus three and dies yeah, yeah I, I agree. And the other thing that's great about Decipher games is they're so immersive in the universe, right? They make you feel like you can play out your favorite scenes. And to be honest, like my favorite scenes in the Lord of the Rings trilogy is not Frodo destroying the ring. My favorite scenes are, you know, the Riders yeah. of Rohan or, you know, like I want to be able to recreate those scenes. Yeah. And uh, I've always how thought sick, that. How sick would an objective have been to be like Rohan appears at, 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 you know, Minas Tirith, and you just like, you just, that's your deck is just like me, Rohan, uh, you know, saving the day. That would have been awesome. Yeah, like, you still would have had like nine movement. Like, you still have like the movement mechanic. Like, the fundamentals didn't have to change. You can still go to nine at nine Aragorn's crown, right? Or at, right. you know, six if Boromir's dead, then, you know, Denethor gives him a hard time, right? But like, you could have had the same race mechanic, but just make it something besides the precious. So that's been my critique of Lord of the Rings. Love the game. I think it looks super cool. A lot of experimental stuff uh, with foiling and you know masterworks. But I agree, the only game that deserves the S tier is Star Wars CCG. Yeah. Uh, All these people are just gnashing their teeth in the comment section about how we underrepresented Boy Crazy on this. <laughs> Uh, I feel like we've talked enough about Star Wars CCG on this channel for a lifetime, but this game had an impact on most games going forward. I mean, even Lorcana coughing up locations now in their newest set. Like, this stuff all was made. A lot of modern game design was built off the backs of, you know, the ideas explored in Star Wars CCG. It's complex, it's clunky, but it has done a lot, I think, for the hobby writ large and it still has probably the biggest community of all i think the star wars community is probably the size of i wouldn't say all these put together but you know it's definitely uh, the largest. yeah absolutely it's all these put together probably right like i think star wars ccg's got to be the biggest non-live game so dead ccg like community out there um and even then like it, it's probably rivaling some of these other games. Like, who who is actually playing Dragon Ball Z? Like, right? Like, but I think what what really did what Star Wars really did well was kind of all the stuff that we've been talking about. Right? Like, the cards all look great. If you doubt me, go look at Bespin Cloud City. That card is just beautiful. Right? Like, all the cards look great. You know the it really feels like you're in star wars and like you know yeah darth maul and darth vader and p59 and you know two stormtroopers were never you know battling qui-gon jinn and yoda at jabba's palace right like that just never actually happens but like when you're playing the game like it actually feels like it's Star Wars, even though it's like a ridiculous situation most of the time, right? But you feel like you're playing Star Wars. They did a really great job of translating the movies because of how granular the game gets, right? Like, yeah, I can have the Millennium Falcon with Captain Han Solo and Chewbacca and a quad laser cannons and special modifications. And I can have Luke and, you know, like and all these people, right? And, and I can fly around the galaxy and I can fight off Executor and then I can do this and I can, so it's, it's just like a very literal translation of the essence of what Star Wars is in a card game form that allows you to do whatever it is that you want to do within that universe while presenting it as a very polished looking product. I, I will agree. And I also just think I love the lore on Star Wars CCG. Like it's funny, it's campy, it's goofy, you know, for a very serious and complex game, it's also quite a 
funny game and like yeah. entertaining, you know, some of the, some of the like text. Um, I think it just did a, a lot and that's why it has longevity. That's why people still talk about it. I was talking with a buddy who's just like, yeah, I'm so glad in 2001 when the game went out of print, I bought a bunch of Star Wars CCG and not Young Jedi or Jedi Knights because you, this is the thing about any of these out of print games. You could have picked the lotto ticket for, oh, I'm going to get really into uh, Wars TCG. I think this is the next thing. And then you spend a thousand bucks and today those cards are worth ten dollars and right. nobody knows what's going to succeed but if it has good fundamentals there's a way better chance of some sort of reemergence or success or you know cultural impact sure. so decipher made some of our favorite games and also made some games that no one's heard of as seen in our d tier here but um <laughs> i think really the top three there in star wars star trek and lord of the rings impacted cards you know ccgs yeah. writ large and that's why they have staying power and you know pretty active communities uh, that you can still kind of go and hang out and play these games on online clients. So Decipher, thank you. Uh, Andy, thank you. Any kind of final thoughts here to close out our list? Yeah, I mean, obviously they're big three, Star Wars, Star Trek, Lord of the Rings. You know, if, if you're a diehard Lord of the Rings person, you know, you probably don't like that it's on an A tier. And for you, it might be a perfect game, but I don't think, I think, you know, or if you're a Star Trek person, you know, same thing, you know, I happen to be a Star Wars person more than Star Trek or Lord of the Rings. And, you know, I don't know really about you, Matt. I think you're probably more, a little bit more Lord of the Rings than anything, but like if, if Star Trek's your game and you're like, this is the best game I played this, I've been playing it since 94. You know, that's your S tier. I, I really can't fault anybody if they kind of rearrange those three games between S and A. They're they're all very good games. They look great. They have all the hallmarks of like decipher stuff going on in them. Um, you know, and I think decipher just goes down in the history of gaming as notable for those three rather than the other nine yeah I, I think that those three can be kind of moved around like there's plenty of valid complaints about star wars ccg there's plenty of reasons why you could move it down it's complex it's clunky it's too complicated but the rest of this list i think is pretty definitive <laughs> the rest of this list maybe young jedi could migrate down a place or a Wars of Austin Powers. You might get a lot more. You might actually not have anything in B, B tier. Yeah. Um, some of these might move down. I think we were trying to have a, a robust list, but uh, that's all I got. This has been a lot of fun. I think we're going to do more of these lists. If people have ideas, like, subscribe, all that stuff, uh, this is fun to do. So thanks for hanging out, guys, and we'll catch you next time.